Morgan Paul, a freshman from BYU, hails from Libertyville, Illinois. She's competing a front two and a half pike, which we're going to see from several competitors. About four other or five divers in this first round are competing this. It's typically an easier dive, one of the easiest dives that each of these athletes will have in their repertoire. So a lot of times you want to start with it, maybe calm those nerves, get a little bit more settled in. Uh, and six and a halves is just a nice way to kind of kick off your meet. See three, that gives you the final champion with the highest score. Elizabeth Holmes will dive next, the freshman from BYU as well, hails from South Jordan, Utah. An inward two and a half tuck and a really good one at that. Perfect distance from the diving board. You don't want to be too close that you scare anyone, but you also can't be too far away from the board. So she's a great distance. I like the position in the air. Twists a little bit, maybe when she... Three-time USA National Qualifier was sixth at the USA Diving National Prelim Zone E Championships. Her head coach, Tice Routson, who was also her club coach at Cougar Dive Club. So now three divers from the University of Miami starts with junior Marcella Marich. That's the best front two and a half we've seen thus far. Excellent entry into the water, and I do really love her pike position in the air also. Now in that pike, you want to make sure your chest is as close to your legs as possible. Your knees are perfectly straight and your toes are pointed, and she checks every box. She's coming off wins in both the one meter and three meter in their last event, a double duel against Princeton in Nova Southeastern. Three seven and a halfs and even 54 for Marcella. Now Carolyn Cheney, junior from Boca Raton, Florida. Same dive. Oh, she had some great height off of the diving board. Unfortunately, lost a little bit of control in it when she hit the water. Nothing too crazy, but definitely could have stopped her rotation a little bit faster and a little stronger in order to not cause a little bit of splash and rotation right there. You're a little forward. That went a little low. A little forward, little over. It's head coach Randy Abelman in his 28th season at the helm for the University of Miami. Nine-time NCAA Diving Coach of the Year. Is coached in the Olympics for Team USA in 96, 2000, 04, 2012, and 16. The only break. Just, just a couple times. <laughs> was the 2008 Olympics in which he coached for South Africa. This is Wally Leyland. We talked about the senior at the top of the show. It doesn't get much better than that. Now, I mentioned at the top of the show, watch for her entries. She has a terrific rip. She, growing up, was predominantly more of a platform diver, which is where that rip came into play. She Now I see her more on springboard, and she has transitioned beautifully. Gorgeous pike position, excellent height and distance from the diving board. All the little things that these judges are looking for, she executed on very well. So the first eights that we have seen, even across the board, for 57.60 for Wally Leyland. She was fifth at the USA Diving National Championships, second at Zone A, finished fourth in the consolation round at the NCAA tournament. So she figures to be tough competition for now these trio of Texas divers that will start off with sophomore Allison Gibson, hails from here in Austin, Texas. Now, Allison takes a different approach. She starts out with a much more difficult dive than we've seen from any of the other competitors. So we have a great view here of what we call a pike save, which is what helps her enter the water so clean. When she hits the water here, you can see right there that she goes into a pike position, pulls her legs underwater with her, and therefore pulling some of that water under too. See, two seven and a halfs and an eight and even 69 for the defending champion. It was Gibson that took home the title last year, followed by Megan O'Brien, Phoebe LeMay of Cal. So we get our first look in a long time at Murphy Bromberg, the junior from Bexley, Ohio, has redshirted the last two seasons. 
Must have feel good for her to be back. So that's what she looks like on springboard. Not a bad start. I think a little bit hesitant it looked like heading into that front two and a half. I would have liked to see her be a little bit more aggressive. Great position in the air, though. Her chest is completely closed onto her legs. You can't get into a tighter pike than that. Unfortunately, just a little shy right there from that vertical spot that might have given her those eights that you saw from Leyland. 51.60, and you said on springboard she has been focusing on platform, correct? Yes, uh, she very solid platform diver, reigning Big 12 champion, reigning U.S. national champion as well. Uh, Red-shirted in order to prepare and uh, work and focus for Olympic trials. Ended up then the next year becoming injured, unfortunately. So she's coming off of two redshirt seasons. So big year for the redshirt junior Murphy Bromberg. The true junior Megan O'Brien to close out round number one. Also similar to teammate Allison Gibson, starts with a little bit more difficult dive. A back one and a half with two and a half twists. And very good scores from the judges, two sevens and one seven and a half. And that's because her twisting position is so tight and clean throughout. She's perfectly vertical when she hits the water. The only thing she really does need to consistently work on is getting her hand a little better on the water so that you can hear that pop sound when she hits and get a better entry. Two sevens and a seven and a half for Megan O'Brien. That concludes round number one, and it goes Gibson, O'Brien, and Leyland. As I would expect, Gibson looked terrific and had much higher degree of difficulty, as did Megan O'Brien. So Wally Leyland had eights, which were the highest scores, but because they get multiplied by a degree of difficulty, you saw Gibson and O'Brien take the lead over her. Why that degree of difficulty is so important when you talk about that multiplying factor and what it can do. Round number two kicked off by Morgan Paul with the back two and a half somersault tuck. Uh, well, she was a little bit too far away from the diving board on this. When she takes off from the board, it'd be helpful if she went a little bit straighter up and got a different angle so that she could get into that tuck position and flip a little bit faster. She looks like she's almost straining to make that dive. See the overhead look. Great angle to give you perspective on some of the things that the judges see and with the diving eye of mm -hmm. people such as yourself. You figure the judges are looking at their execution, their grace throughout the movements, their power, their strength, and then also that entry is probably the most important part because it's just the stamp on that dive and the last thing that they're going to remember. So fellow Cougar freshman Elizabeth Holmes up now. She's actually born in Hong Kong. Oh, and unfortunately that was that was not the front two and a half she was looking for. Came out of that pike position and almost just stopped dead while rotating. Her legs didn't continue rotating with her to the water. Comes out way too early, you see there. And that pike position as she's hitting is going to cause a lot of deductions. So four, five, and a five and a half, 34.804 homes. Marcella Merich from Zadar, Croatia, was second on the three meter height at last year's ACC championships. She finished fourth at the 2015 UT Diving Invitational in this event. That was a pretty good dive considering her hurdle. She was a little far back from the end of the board, and this is a big dive. You really want to get everything you can out of the diving board in order to complete it well. But instead, she ends up a little bit back, you see right there. So she's, she's kind of coming in, really needing to pull into that pike position as hard as she can in order to make it to vertical, and she does. Two sevens and a seven and a half brings her to a total of 118.50. Go talk with her coach and teammates. She just asked her coach there, why am I so far back on the end of the diving board? A lot of times when you head into a new facility, you have to get used to the diving boards. They're never going to be the same as what you're comfortable with in your own training location. 
Carolyn Chaney, a 107C. We will see this dive four times in this round. So that's something you have talked about, showing the judges not only nailing your own dive, but then what it does for your other competitors. How'd she do? Absolutely. You want to put the pressure on him. And I think she did a great job. I like the position in the air, a nice tight tug. A little bit too much of a splash. I think when she came out and reached for the water, she didn't have quite enough time to get into a tight enough position in order to get a full rip on the water. But a good, solid second round dive. So 57.40. So as I mentioned, see this from Wally Leyland now, and then Murphy Bromberg and Megan O'Brien. Leyland is up on this 107C. This is the dive that Leyland struggled on the most in prelims, and she struggled a little bit here to get to the end of the board on her hurdle, similar to what we've seen from her teammates. Rotation or height off the diving board, so it looked a little bit like she was struggling. You can see how far back her feet are there. She manages to pull off a pretty good dive considering that hurdle, but it definitely could have been better. Now, distance-wise, is that about three, four, five inches? Yeah, I would say that probably looked like it was about five to six inches, yes. And what you're giving up there is, is more power, correct? Power, yes, power and height off of the board. So you need that power in order to build and get into a quick rotation. And you also need the height in order to have enough time to complete the dive. Gibson on a 105B. Beautiful. That is a, a, a more simple dive for her. In the previous round, we actually saw the same dive with a full twist, but when you executed that beautifully, the position in the air, perfect. Right at the end of the board, her toes are there, she's balanced, absolutely stunning. And then to top it off with an entry like that, it's gonna be hard. About how everything starts with the hurdle, you could tell on that hurdle from Gibson that it could have been a great dive and obviously reflected in the results. Three nines, the highest score we have seen thus far, hosted by Gibson. Had a huge summer that we'll show you a little bit later is Murphy Bromberg up on that 107C. Terrific dive. Again, Comes back to the hurdle, similar to her teammate Allison Gibson, right on the end of the diving board. So she got everything out of it and made a front three and a half look easy. She completes these three and a half rotations, no problem at all. Manages to get a good hold of her hand as she hit the water, which you'll see a great angle here of her holding her hand right there in order to improve that entry. So now we're starting to see some very good scores pop up on the board, two seven and a halfs and an eight or the redshirt junior Murphy Bromberg to close out round number two. The Megan O'Brien, the junior from Concord, Massachusetts, NCAA qualifier the last two years. Both the one meter and three meter heights. Oh, she manages to, to step up to the competition, seeing her teammate Bromberg compete that same dive and she executes it just as well. Now, when you watch Megan O'Brien, this is such a great example of so much strength and power throughout this dive. She's much higher than any of the competition, so three and a half flips is just a piece of cake for her, but manages to come out at the right time, make it to vertical, and really keep this competition going between her and her two teammates. The score, seven, seven and a half, and eight for O'Brien to close out round number two, but the current leader, her teammate, the sophomore Allison Gibson, who had quite the summer, putting some stamps into her passport. We'll show you that and also bring you the final four rounds when we come back this women's three meter final from Austin, Texas. Morgan Paul on a 305C, but let's touch on Gibson just for a moment and what she had done as a freshman and then through the summer, what are her goals and what should we be expecting to see from her in this sophomore campaign? I think sky's the limit. Nobody, including her, I think really expected her to win NCAA championships on one meter. The very first night of NCAAs, she's an amazingly talented diver, multi-time junior national champion, but she went in completely unaffected by the big lights of NCAAs and really excelled under that spotlight. So. 
I think she surprised herself. She maybe surprised Matt Scoggin. I think he knew she had it in her, but uh, maybe not that early in her collegiate career. So to me, now let's look at multiple national champions, one meter, three meter. She really is just an incredibly talented athlete. Four and a half and two fives for Morgan Paul to kick off round number three. Her teammate Elizabeth Holmes up next. 205C will be the dive. This is a back two and a half tuck. She'll be competing in the tuck position. Other athletes that we'll see throughout the meet will also be doing it in the pike position, which is a little bit more difficult, and that will show in the degree of difficulty. That looked pretty good in the air, maybe six inches or so, a little too far back from the diving board, which could have affected her timing in coming out and reaching for the water. So she did leave it a little bit over-rotated. You'll see right here, comes in at that angle. Not exactly what you want to see. Can create a huge splash. Looks a little bit worse in slow motion than it did in real time. But that definitely will affect her scores moving forward. Two sixes and a six and a half of 51.80 for Holmes. We'll bring up Marcella March. She finished second on the one meter at the NCAA Zone B Championships, finished 24th, so figures to be a great one meter competition tomorrow when you talk about Gibson and what she did at NCAA. Obviously still much to come in the three as well. Her and Allison Gibson are the only divers competing this particular dive tonight. It is a front three and a half pike and a very tough dive. Unfortunately, she doesn't get the hurdle under her that she wants. You could see her bend her arms in that hurdle, which means she kind of lost her balance. She did, however, make a pretty good dive out of a rough hurdle, a little bit short of that vertical. But again, three and a half flips in the pike position is difficult, and I think she should be happy with that at this point. And that is her hardest dive, that DD of 3.1. So a six, a six and a half, and a six and a half for 58.90. Carolyn Cheney up on the 305B DD of 3.0. Much better hurdle than what she had in the round prior to this. Unfortunately, she didn't get quite the speed in that rotation that she needed in order to get a perfect entry on the water, but she did manage to make it to vertical very well. It looks great in the air. I love her positions. She's very graceful, and those toes are beautiful. A little bit off to the side, too. However, the judges can't really see that from their angle, so most likely no. They don't have our cameras. They don't have our there. cameras. But they wish they did. That'll work. That'll work. I like the hat adjustment. Ty Routes and the head coach for BYU dove for Randy Abelman, the head coach for Miami. Tice, a four-time NCAA championship, so obviously some camaraderie there and a relationship. Absolutely. As coach Abelman sees another one of his divers go in, and Wally Leyland with the 305 seat. Now, Wally Leyland, a legacy to Miami herself. Her father competed for the University of Miami, was an excellent diver. And apparently he passed those jeans along because that was a beautiful dive, a reverse two and a half tuck. We just saw her teammate compete in the pike position, which has a higher degree of difficulty. But that's not going to matter if you do it the way that Wally just competed it for eight, eight and a half, and eight from the three judges. 68.60, so that should move Leyland right into the thick of things. And this is that dive you had spoke of from March, the 107B, the hardest dive that we'll see amongst all these competitors. Gibson up on the same one. This her hardest dive. Oh, that dive was going to struggle from the beginning. She looked a little bit unsteady and didn't even get a full circle of her arms during her hurdle, which means she basically got half of the power out of the board that you want to see. Right here, she doesn't even get a chance to swing her arms around. And when you do that, you lose any kind of energy and height that you can develop from that hurdle. I'm impressed she even made it to her head at that point because that's really tough to do. On that reflected in the scores, a two and a half, three and a three and a half. So obviously talking over with head coach Matt Scoggin about what can be fixed in that dive. So now this one figures to be wide open after that dive from the defending champ, Allison Gibson. Murphy Bromberg, a 
205B is her hardest dive at 3.0. She nails it. I don't know if I've seen anybody throughout warm-ups or the events earlier today compete a back two and a half so beautifully. My favorite part is her position in the air. She has a beautiful pike. It's nice and tight. Those legs are perfectly straight. Everything you want to see in that dive, but then she has a great sense of where she is in the air in order to come out of that position at the perfect time and reach for the water. Barely a splash and eights from every judge. I, I would have done the exact same thing, if not higher scores. Beautiful. Well, our camera operators down there have to like it when the splash is minimal. A trio <laughs> of eights, obviously very good from Bromberg. And you had mentioned it earlier, but the composure that you see from these divers as they're preparing for the dive, you saw that from her, and she really nailed that dive. Yes. I know we just talked about Allison Gibson and the traveling that she did. Murphy Bromberg has also traveled the world to dive and represent Team USA, so she's very used to some big competitions like this. Megan O'Brien, on the other hand, has not traveled internationally like her teammates have to that scale, but is competing like a veteran right now. She has learned from her experience her freshman and sophomore years, very frustrated with how she competed at the end of the seasons and I think has brought that frustration into her training and it has motivated her. She's really developed into an exceptionally diligent and responsible diver when she's competing. She doesn't lose track of what she's doing. She keeps her composure and that's something that took her a couple years to figure out. Mention O'Brien, NCAA qualifier the last two years, a U.S a diving national championship qualifier in the three meter. She finished seventh in that three meter final. And right now, after that dive from Gibson, O'Brien sits atop the leaderboard. By just under three points though, and with three more rounds to go, this leaderboard can shake up quite a bit. Wally Leyland also sticking in there with some of the most beautiful consistent dives you'll see. Doesn't have the same level of difficulty, but it doesn't matter if she's gonna be scoring eights and eight and a halves on them. So halfway home in the women's three meter final, three dives left. Round four will start with Morgan Paul on a 405C DD of 2.7 for the freshman. I like how quickly she goes when she gets to the end of the board. Some divers you see sit there, think a little bit, maybe are thinking too much in their head. She really gets to the end of the board, gets herself set, and goes, which I always think is a pretty good quality. You kind of don't get, get. You had mentioned that earlier about your preparation, especially for those. In Think it. There's really, we talk about all the little details of each of these dives, and you can very easily overthink things and get in your own head. I was 100% guilty of that. So I think it really helps, and it depends. Everyone has their own style, but when people get themselves set and immediately get into their dive, it can really help. Elizabeth Holmes, let's talk dive order and how you stack your dives. For you personally, what was it important to do? Start off with easier dives that you knew you could nail, or would you start with your hardest dives? So my strategy typically was to start with an easy dive that I felt very confident in that I knew I could nail, just because you want to get off on the right foot. I also like to end with a dive that maybe was a little more difficult, a higher degree of difficulty, but I still felt very comfortable with it and knew that if it was going to come down to the final round, I had a great dive in my back pocket. Gainer two and a half right there, not my favorite dive. I used to put it right in the middle, just <laughs> ease myself into it and then have some room to make up for it after the fact if it wasn't what I wanted. Oh, I got to do this one, yeah. so let's just get it out of the way. Exactly. Marcella Marich, reverse two and a half somersault tuck. Same dive. See how she handles it. Very well, wow. We're seeing some excellent reverse two and a halves from this Miami team. Great hurdle on this particular dive. She looked very comfortable at the end of the board. Very much balanced. Maybe a couple inches too far away from the diving board, but a gorgeous entry. You can see underwater, she bends her knees in order to bring that water under with her. Great dive. 67.20 brings her total score. 
to a 244.6 after a seven and a half and eight and eight and a half. For the junior from Miami Hurricanes, Carolyn Cheney, her teammate, junior as well. Goes by Cece. She's a biology major. She's on a pre-med track. Wow. Great med program down there too. That's excellent. That's really tough in order to balance the training schedule that goes into being a diver, practicing probably in the morning, every single afternoon, Saturdays, and then to throw maybe kind of a pre-med program on. So that is really impressive. So as we look at the replay, but take me through that. A lot of people may be not aware, but your diving days, what did your typical day look like? Um, it would usually be a morning practice of a little bit more basics, uh, about an hour to an hour and a half in the morning. Uh, either it was going to be at, uh, I think, 5 or 6. I'm trying, I'm That's not morning. Around 6. <laughs> 6 a.m., really easy to wake up for a That's college student. That's pre-dawn. 6 a.m., yeah. Every afternoon you practice for two hours. Uh, you have weights uh, for about an hour, three afternoons out of the week as well, and then Saturday morning too. And what about class in there? You have three to four classes well, a day? Well, apparently they expect you to go to class <laughs> also. So, yes, you usually have one to uh, two to three classes a day. So just a taste at what these student athletes and specifically these divers go through and then the final product. We are so fortunate to see out here. That was Wally Leyland in with the 205C. And what a final product that was. Similar to her gainer two and a half, great entry. You see that she always has very little splash like I pointed out in the opening. Her entries are her strong suit. Beautiful position in the air as well. She's just so consistent. Two seven and a half and an eight for Wally Leyland. So now a big dive for Allison Gibson, the last one. Obviously not up to her standard. How does she bounce back here? She's got to just relax and keep her composure. That's huge. That's a big dive to come back with. A reverse two and a half pike is not easy. Reverse dives in general can stress a lot of athletes out. And here we get to look at a comparison to her teammate, Megan O'Brien, who had done the exact same dive. And you know what? They did them very similar. I think Allison Gibson's I liked a little bit better because I think she stayed a little bit tighter in her dive in the position when she hit the water. It was a 67.50 for Megan O'Brien. That was her dive to conclude round number two. So it said Gibson just a touch better. That's obviously reflected in the score. Got a good eye. <laughs> well, she's got a lot of ground to make up though. So she's got two more rounds to figure out how to make up for that loss that she had in round three. Well, and Kat, to your point you just made, you saw some of that body language, the breathing, the relaxing, talking with Coach Scoggin. That was a good bounce back dive for Allison Gibson. Now Murphy Bromberg. 305 seat. Oh, this is what I love. She did a 305 C, which is the tuck position in prelims. Now in finals, she shows up tonight and decides she's going to step her game up and competes it in the pike position, which I think is excellent. And this is the perfect time of year to do that. Great dive as well. A little bit short of vertical. And when she hits the water, she was in a bit of an arch position, which is where you'll see some deductions. But I'm just impressed that she wanted to come in and compete a more difficult dive for herself and get experience and get those dives under her belt. Two sixes and a five and a half for Bromberg, currently sitting in third place. Now Megan O'Brien to close out round number four. We saw this dive from her teammate Gibson earlier. It's called a full out. It's a front two and a half with a full twist in the pike position. I'm going to test you on this one later, Ty. That's, <laughs> you better know what this is. A lot of dive here, and she executes it very well. I think she was a little bit out of control when she hit the water. I would have liked to see her stop the rotation a little bit more on a dime as opposed to letting it fly slightly past vertical in order to see some bigger scores. So O'Brien was the leader heading into this round. And after a six and a half and two seven, she will remain atop the leader board. Just under six points, she is clear. Texas in the lead. Their head coach, Matt Scoggin, two rounds left in the women's three meter final. Compete on the one meter, but still two dives left for our eight competitors, starting with Morgan Paul. Now, unfortunately, when she hits the water on that, she isn't able to keep her body square. 
her body kind of continues to twist a little bit, which we'll see a good shot here in slow motion. But as she's hitting the water, right there, you see both legs. And, and that's the problem. You want to make sure that you are as square as possible when you're hitting. 43.75. Score for Morgan Paul. A couple of her teammates on the men's side we saw dive earlier as well. It's now Elizabeth Holmes. Competing the same dive as her teammate Morgan Paul, a front one and a half with two twists. She executes this a little bit better in the air than her teammate. Unfortunately, she has a similar problem when she hits the water and just loses her legs and kind of continues to rotate a bit, which is going to create some deductions. Scores a five and two five and a halves for Holmes. But Kat, we had talked about the importance of this and that it is the similar format that these teams will see at their conference championships and into NCAA. So tell me about for you as a competitor when you would have that prelims, which tomorrow for the women, it'll be at 11 a.m. and then the finals at 4.05. What are you doing that time in between? In between, um, well, I would eat <laughs> first and foremost. Um, no, you, you really, you try to do anything you can to relax. You want to make sure you eat something good. Um, hoping I ate something healthy, but back then maybe not so much, I'm not sure. But yes, you just want to go back. You want to make sure you just stay relaxed, stay calm. Uh, I like to not think about the competition at all, kind of get my mind thinking about something else, just to not overstress about it and overthink it. And then you want to get back early enough to stretch and warm up and start feeling confident enough to head into finals. Thoughts on this guy? I thought it was excellent. She has a beautiful entry as well. Great position in the air. Sevens from every judge, and it's because it was just such a solid dive that landed perfectly vertical. Even 63. So how much are you tuned into what the other divers are doing and the scores they're posting compared that, to just focusing on your own dive? So you know what? That depends on the divers. I knew a lot of divers that really like to stare at the leaderboard, know exactly where they were, exactly what they needed in the next round in order to be where they wanted. I personally was the complete opposite. I needed to know what nobody else was doing. I didn't want to know where I was in the standings. I needed to just focus on my own dives and nobody else. So I think each competitor is just a little bit different, and they need to figure out over time what works best for them. What would you see there from Cheney? I thought that was a pretty solid dive, an inward two and a half in the tuck position. You've seen a couple other divers do it in the pike position which means that they're going to have a little bit higher degree of difficulty. But she got two sevens, one six and a half. So it's going to keep her pretty solid in the standings. Now, as a junior, if my notes are correct, you finished third in the NCAA at this height? At three, on three meter, yes. Yes, I did. As Wally Leyland steps up. But what were your memories from that event? <laughs> you know, it sounds terrible. I had some great dives in that event. Um, Coach Matt Scoggin likes to remind me even to this day, like 10 years later, that I had a chance to win on my last dive. I didn't know it because, like I said, I didn't pay attention to the standings. <laughs> Great. It, it tied in perfectly. And I, you know what? I didn't get a good hurdle, not my best dive, and I ended up in third. So um, it, it's a happy memory because it's the best I placed uh, in that event at NCAAs. But uh, leave it to Matt Scoggin to make sure I, I at least always remember. It was a full out. It was a front two and a half with, uh, with one twist. 55.35 on the fifth dive for Wally Leyland. Again, just consistent. She has by far the highest individual scores. So she's got a lot of sevens, a lot of eights from these judges, more than anyone else. I've seen seven eights or more for Leyland individually, but you had mentioned she'd been hampered by the degree of difficulty. A big dive coming up for Allison Gibson if she wants to get back into this one. Oh, that's not going to help. Unfortunately, she didn't get the speed in that rotation that she needed, so she left it short of vertical. We'll see here on the replay, it looked good in the air because she is just such a graceful diver, so she's got a nice position in the air, but when she hits the water, she's at that angle, and unfortunately, you're going to get a bigger splash when you hit the water at that angle, and you're going to lose points because you didn't fully complete two and a half rotations. A six, six and a half, and a six and a half for Allison Gibson. 
So Gibson was in fifth coming into this round. Just ahead of her teammate Murphy Bromberg up on the back. One and a half, somersault, two and a half, twist free. Executed very well. Murphy Bromberg is a solid diver. It's really fun to watch her back on springboard again when I've only seen her on platform for so long. Now, twisting, it's tough to keep your body perfectly straight, keep your legs perfectly together, and I think she does a terrific job of that. Unfortunately, the only area I see that she's going to be frustrated with is just a big splash when she hit the water because I don't think she got a good hold of her hand in order to get that rip. Total of 295.10 through five rounds for Bromberg. Leaves her currently in third. Megan O'Brien, the leader. Heading into the fifth round, 205B. DD of 3.0. Megan O'Brien controls her destiny at this point, and she's become so much more consistent. Now, this dive was vertical. She was very strong in the air because, like I've talked about, her power and strength is just incredible. She is a little bit too far away from the diving board on this particular dive. So you'll see here that distance right there, she needs to bring it in a couple of feet, and in doing so, we'll be able to exceed some of these scores that she's getting. 63 for O'Brien, leaves her atop the leaderboard at 315.20. Marriage trailing her, and that's big because both of them will be competing a 405B, the exact same dive in round number six, so one to go to determine the champion. It's a tight race, it really is. Those top four divers within just 20 points of each other. It may not seem like a lot, but if O'Brien stumbles a bit, she's gonna open the door wide open for any of these divers, Marcella or Wally from Miami. And then Murphy Bromberg does have an outside chance of coming in and getting onto the, the podium, at least at second place. So we've talked about the head coaches, but the coaches also, the judges, you see the keypads in their hand of the three visiting coaches. So they are the ones critiquing the divers and providing these scores as well. They wear a lot of hats. You won't see that at uh, conference championships or at NCAAs. They do hire judges and bring higher judges in. You'll also see they'll have seven judges at those events. In order to get a more fair average, they will drop the two highest and two lowest scores and just keep the middle three. But you would have to figure your own head coach is usually going to be your toughest critique, right? Probably, yes. I mean, they know what you're capable of, and if you stumble here or there, they might be a little more harsh on you. Morgan Paul rounding out her day. Five and a half and two sixes to close things out for the youngster. It was a good night for her. She improved on several dives from what she did this morning, and that's what you want to see, especially at this point in the season. You just want to continue to see improvement throughout their competition. So the second of the two BYU freshmen as Elizabeth Holmes forward. One and a half somersault, two twist free. Actually, what she, she, it looks like she's changed a dive. She's going to do a back one and a half with two and a half twists, which is similar to her teammate in the previous round. But actually, she adds an entire twist, so it's much more difficult. Uh, unfortunately, she leaves it very short. So when she hits the water, she's going to be in kind of a pike position, which not only creates a splash, but you're going to get some pretty significant deductions because technically right there, you didn't even really complete the full rotation. Is a common question you got, how deep is that pool? No, you know, I don't know how often I got that. It's pretty deep. It's very frustrating if you lose your Sammy at the bottom of the pool or like a, a hair tie if you wear your hair in a ponytail and you have to go down and get it. It's uh -oh. not comfortable. It's not comfortable. Always have a backup. So this is a big dive. Marcella Marich mentioned doing the same dive as Megan O'Brien. So this could well decide. She has less than eight points to make up with Megan O'Brien. So not knowing how O'Brien does in her last round, this is very significant. And you know what, I liked it. I think one of her strongest suits is that she has a great position in the air. It's just, she's very graceful and beautiful to watch. So you see her here, just such a tight pike position. 
ends up leaving it just a little bit over rotated. But otherwise, a really good last round and a really great six rounds of diving from her. Randy Abelman's probably going to be very excited about her performance tonight. A five and a half, a six and a seven. So really, we haven't seen that big of a gap. It's a between good discrepancy. The judges, but talking with her head coach. So we'll see if that clears the path for O'Brien. Carolyn Cheney to close out her day on the 5152B. Oh, see, that looked pretty good in the air, but she didn't have quite enough power in order to complete that dive successfully. She comes out and starts to go into her full twist. She ends up splitting her legs a little bit. She can't control her legs in the air. You'll see that right there when she hit the water. Hits the water in a little bit of a pike position, seems to just struggle to make it around. But that dive has some good potential if she keeps working on it. 329.05 will end the day for Cheney. And now, Kat, we've had 14 straight dives with no eights given by the judges. So they've definitely tightened it up a touch. Wally Leyland was in third place entering this final round. And if anybody's going to be able to get eights out of these judges in the last round, it's definitely Wally. Oh, and she just might. It'll be close. That was terrific. I love the rip sound that you can hear when she hits the water. That's what you want in order to get a really clean entry. So what would you give it? I'd probably give it more of a seven. Um, unfortunately, I think the entry, she was a little uneasy, didn't seem perfectly square as she was hitting the water. It was still a terrific dive, but not quite those eights that we saw from her earlier in the round. A seven, a seven, and a seven and a half. 60.20 puts her at 359.35. That currently in second place, so she trails her teammate, Priscilla Marich. Gotta get your hand on the water. You gotta get your hand on the water, Wally. <laughs> Allison Love listening Gibson to that. will close out her three meter competition with a 405C. DD of 2.7. Coach looks on. This is an easier dive for Allison, but she executes it beautifully, which is a nice way to finish up what was a bit of a, a up and down event for her. She had some really high notes and then some low points, but this is a great way to close out her night. Phenomenal entry. And again, what she's great at is just becoming so elegant throughout the dive while also maintaining a lot of strength and power. 351.15, two eights and a seven and a half. For Gibson figures to be a good thing to build on heading into tomorrow's competition as Gibson will not defend her title. Murphy Bromberg, one of two divers left. Inward two and a half somersault pike. That 405B to close things out. Now this is another example of Murphy stepping up her game in the finals as opposed to prelims. She competed an easier dive in this round. Oh, you know what? I really like that she not only tried some of her more difficult dives, but she's executing them very well. She doesn't make this all the way to vertical. However, she does have a terrific entry into the water and it looks great in the air. Maybe just comes out of that pike position a hair too early. So you see it just a little bit shy. Not List of dives. Needed a 68.1 to jump into first. Gets an even 60 for Bromberg. Currently sits in third place. So can Megan O'Brien bring it home? Needs a 48 on this inward two and a half somersault pike. If she beats that score, she will be the champion. I think she's done it. It's going to be a little bit close. I thought she had it in the air. It was a great dive, beautiful position and perfect distance. But then she comes out and reaches for the water a little hesitantly. Right there. She just leaves it just a little short. Well, she didn't have to. She had more than enough time and more than enough power to make that dive all the way around. However, I think it's going to be enough.
It was 48 that she needed. So we give you the overhead look for Megan O'Brien to become the champion on the three meter. The score a 61.50. So there it is, the champion from the University of Texas, Junior Megan O'Brien. She's done it, and you know what I loved about it? it? That was the most consistent round of six dives I've ever seen her do. She has learned and grown so much over the last two years here at Texas, and you're really just seeing her bloom into such a not only powerful diver, but also consistent, and that's tough to do. So probably talking over that with head coach Matt Scoggin as O'Brien wins first. We will be back to wrap things up here on day number one, the women's three meter final. Champion Megan O'Brien from the University of Texas. In Austin, Texas, day number one of the 2017 UT Diving Invitational. We get our first look at the women on the three meter height. It was a good showing. For two of the divers from Miami taking second and third in marriage and Leyland, but the overall champion, champion, excuse me, Megan O'Brien from the University of Texas. Tyler Denning, Kat LaRocca, let's wrap up day number one. And for Megan O'Brien, it was really consistency across all of her dives. Her scores ranged between either six and a half and eight. That's